March 18th, 2024 meeting of the Bellingham Select Board. Uh, I invite you to please rise as we do always, but uh, start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, we have some um, multiple things on the agenda, so we need to just take care of some housekeeping items. The first is an open public hearing. The Bellingham Select Board will hold a public hearing on Monday, March 18, 2024, at 7 p.m. The Municipal Senate Arcane meeting, at which time Larry Spazato, town clerk, will discuss local election requirements pursuant to Chapter 92 of the Acts of 2022, the Votes Act, and whether the town will vote to adopt out of certain non-mandatory features, such as voting by mail and in-person early voting for annual municipal elections, assignment of police officers at polling locations, as well as polling hours, will also be discussed. Um, for the sake of other things on the agenda, I would entertain a motion to defer the start of that or... So moved. Second. second. First and second, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, none. The second part of the seven o'clock, uh, we had the pleasure tonight of welcoming the fire department as we do periodically for a pinning ceremony for all of Massachusetts state representatives. Mike sort of scheduled to be here. Uh, Chief? Good evening, everyone. You surprised me, Mike, by being on that side of the house. <laughs> Oh, uh, again, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, thank you to the, the uh, folks in the audience. Thank you to everyone listening at home. We started a tradition um, about eight months ago of uh, pinning all of our new people and people who are being promoted. Tonight, we want to follow through with that again. We have three personnel tonight that we'd like to bring forward, introduce to the board, and pin as well. So if we're ready, the first member we'd like to bring up is uh, Firefighter Paramedic Tim Cole. Tim joined the department in January of this year. Uh, Tim King was a transfer from another department. We were very fortunate to get Tim. Uh, Tim has 12 years as a paramedic and uh, eight years as a firefighter. Uh, Tim is going to be pinned tonight by his wife, Jill. Taking his two little girls as well, too. Great. It's okay. <laughs> no, this is good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is uh, Corey Lemon. Uh, Corey's name might ring a bell to a couple. Corey worked for us a couple years past, uh, had left, and I'm proud to say he realized the grass wasn't greener on the other side. Uh, Corey came back to us uh, in February. Um, Corey's been with us for a couple months now. Uh, tonight, also, a uh, good friend of mine, uh, his dad, uh, Todd Lemon, who's the police chief in Auburn. Todd's going to be pinning Corey tonight. Corey, Todd. Actually, Chief. It's okay. We won't hold it against you. We're all, all friends here. We won't hold it against you. <laughs> Considering Corey just told me about this this morning at 5.33, there's a good <laughs> chance he is going to get stabbed. I asked him. <laughs> no, he coincidentally uh, pinned me when I get, uh, when I made police chief a couple of years ago. So oh, nice. thank you very much. Well, thank you. Well, <laughs> Next up, last but not least, is uh, Ben Patensky. Um, Ben came to us uh, back from in August, um, new paramedic at that point, uh, came right to us out of medic school. We're fortunate, Ben just graduated recruit um, three weeks ago. Uh, ben is being pinned tonight by his mom, Deborah. So De come on up, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just a photographer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 
bring up Representative Soda. Uh, he has a citation for Ben. And congratulations. Thank you, Sabellina, and welcome to the side department. You'll be blessed for many years. We'll be praying for you as we do all the firefighters and I just here with everyone all across the country. Commonwealth of Massachusetts, be it here known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers the sincerest congratulations to Benjamin Bittenke in recognition of your success, successful graduation from the Massachusetts Firefighting Academy and commitment to serve the Commonwealth. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for, hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. Given this, it is the 26th day of February that we graduated, right? Keep us Ronald Mariano, Speaker of the House, and offered by Michael J. Soder, uh, State Representative. Congratulations. Thank you, Seth. Thank you. Thank you. Again, thank you for the time. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everyone uh, in attendance for tonight. Chief, thank you for coming out. Uh, you know, short notice, we'll work on that. Uh, thank you, Jane, for the great show for our uh, PFT members. Larry, you need to do your business now. So, you want all three, Larry? Would you like all three at one time? We're going to do it right there. Excellent. Four minutes to just get out. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Thank you. 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 That you will treat all individuals with dignity, dignity and respect and ensure that protections are located to ensure the safety of the community and preservation of human life. That you will always hold yourself in the service of health and preservation. Despite the values of this person and of the town of the And that your actions will be bound by the Charter and Bylaws of Bellingham, the Constitutions of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and the United States of America. For folks who may be zooming in or watching on cable eight right now, what's happening is our town clerk is swearing in and having the um, fireman sign into the re register for the town. Yeah. Let me go to the house and fly. Where is he? He could run the whole thing. That's your dad. Yeah, that's that's stop. Again, the thank you to the boy. Let me shake this for you. Thank you very thank much. You. Jim, thank Corey, you. and Ben, thank you for being here and for the turnout of the, the department as well and, and Rep Soda as well. So, thank you very much. Have a great night. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You. Yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
right. So uh, again, we are resuming this meeting and we're also on table eight. So for those people in attendance, the next part of our agenda uh, is a new part of our segment. Uh, it's listed as citizens input. Members who are interested in, uh, residents who are interested in being part of uh, the start of our meeting can reach out to Hillary Alley at H-A-L-L-I-E at BellinghamMA.org. Our agenda is set three days in advance, but residents may also join us. We have such a case, uh, Steve Goyette, after the agenda was set, has expressed interest in joining us. Steve, if you would like to join us. Sure. Would you like me to speak from the bleachers or come from? Actually, so that people can see um, okay. the, the way the segment is set up, if there's anyone else who wanted to speak, we had set it up at 7 and 7.05. So if someone else does have a question, uh, we can address that after Mr. Goyette. I appreciate the time. I, I think, as uh, everyone knows, I started a petition not long ago that would uh, initiate a special town meeting where a vote would be uh, taken to put a moratorium on any future warehouses in the town. Uh, we've received the 200 plus signatures. Um, Larry told me that they were certified. So I am here to formally request a special town meeting so we could uh, set up a time and a date to vote on it. Yeah. Um, there was a question, I believe, that when you and I talked, Dennis, about the exact language and the law firm or someone has vetted the language that we would be voting on? No, that, that's for the uh, another matter. Uh, their article that they put together is what will be okay. uh, voted on. It's by petition. The board would have to hold the meeting 40, uh, no more than 45 days from the date that the uh, signatures were certified. So no later than 45 days from today. Um, well, do you remember what the posting requirement is to have it advertised prior to the meeting, prior to the special town meeting? I don't. Yeah. Um, you mean in the paper? Right. Oh, I think um, I so, think it's just ten days before. Okay. If I had to, if I remember. So it's it's no no more than forty five days. Uh, Larry, I didn't quite hear what you were saying. I was saying that the hearing. I, I was saying I was saying that the uh, town meeting has to be held uh, no more than forty five days from tonight. Uh, there is a requirement for a public hearing. Yeah. Like, as a planning board. Right. And that requires two advertisements. Two advertisements. Wow. Okay. So so does the 45 days start tonight or the 45 days start from the planning board? Well, no, it should start from tonight because it's when there. Okay. But it's actually right. Certain. Uh -huh. Right. So is there well, anything that I need to do? For... Yeah. So we need to live with Okay. Yeah. It's only once he delivers at the yeah, 45 yeah, so days. To the certifying. Oh, okay. So six forty-five days out would be no later than June. I mean, sorry, May second. Yeah. What do you do? That's a Thursday night. Mm -hmm. I mean, is everyone agreement? So we're at the eighteenth. So I just went out six weeks and three days. So the twenty-fifth, mm -hmm. the first, the eighth, fifteenth, twenty-second, twenty-ninth, June second mm -hmm. is forty-five days May, out. May second. May second, sorry, thank you. We typically do town meetings on a Wednesday, so you can do it the first if you wanted to. And we'll have to check availability with the uh, high school. Yeah. Okay. Go with the first and give the chairman the latitude to adjust it if necessary. Uh, that way, we don't have to wait two weeks to, to yeah. schedule that. So we'll shoot for the first of May. May. And um, if it needs to be adjusted, then the, the chairman has the latitude to adjust it to accommodate the school uh, schedule if that's okay with everyone. Yeah. Okay. Steve? Yeah. The, the more notice, the better, just so I can get word out. You know, to those people that are interested in. Yeah, I think the only question is whether there's any uh, concerts or something that's set up drama presentations that may be already in work. But I think that can be confirmed with the superintendent's office in the morning. Okay. And um, about scheduling with the planning board. We can go ahead and get that going. So obviously, we'll have to do that uh, either the first or second meeting. We have first or second meeting, and it. it all right. Okay. So, so last question: Do we know 
uh, when we will know a date by, a firm date by? So relative to the date availability of the school would be probably two days from now, okay. if not tomorrow afternoon. Oh, um, just... And then the planning board situation. Okay. Getting the schedule. And, and the planning board will hold a public hearing on your article to, and then they, they will make a recommendation at town meeting so it'll go forward, but they'll notify you uh, as to when that, that hearing will be. They meet the second and fourth Thursdays of the month. And what's the purpose of this as it relates to the special town meeting? The planning board hearing? Yeah. Uh, planning board has a public has to have a public hearing on any uh, amendments to the zoning. So it gives the public an opportunity to offer input uh, on that, and then the planning board would offer a recommendation. Okay. Right. Okay. Do you know if at that hearing that I am able to speak? With yes. regard to it? Uh, you would I would imagine they'll ask you to present okay. the you're the petitioner, so they ask you to present the um, the article and give some information, whatever information okay. you wanted to provide on that. Okay. And then they open it up for their own conversation and public comment. Okay. This this is where text messaging is good. I get a message that the auditorium is available first. <laughs> well, you're lucky you did that because otherwise that phone should be Plus me, Judy. Yeah. It is. It is. So we thank you. So it's like the yeah. I mean, and is there anything we have to vote relative to that to put into the minutes, or is that? Uh, I think just vote to accept it. Uh, to schedule a special town meeting to uh, hear the petitioners out on May first. Mo motion to schedule a public town meeting for Mr. Goyette's petition. It's a special town meeting. Special town meeting. Yeah. Second. First and second. And any further discussions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None? Four zero. All right, so the next step will be uh, getting on the planning board's agenda. Okay. And congratulations on getting the 200 signatures. So okay. May 1st at what time? Seven so, thirty. Yeah, we, that would do later just because of the darkness and uh, activities at the school. Seven? Seven thirty. Thank you. Seven thirty. Like the way we do every town meeting is at seven thirty, so there probably it would be the best. Okay. So the planning board will be in touch with you as far as uh, the well, here goes. That's right. right. Okay. And you can always follow us too. Okay. All right. So you're gonna he's gonna have to drop that off to me though, correct? The um his his petition article. Um I think well, Larry, Larry has it. Oh Larry has it? Yeah. Yes. He's gonna have to deliver You have to deliver it to oh, Okay. Yeah. So you guys are copy as well. Yeah. I'll swing by and get it and hand deliver it. Okay. Sounds good. Great. Okay. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thanks, Steve. And I saw you raise your hand. Was there another something yeah, else? Yeah, she wants to talk during the public hearing for the voters at the vote at oh, with Larry. Okay. All right. Uh, having satisfied the other two motions of the agenda items at seven o'clock, we will now return to the seven o'clock public hearing. Larry, would you like to join us? Or something specific that we have to consider the yes so um i sent you some information i think the one of last week um, with some numbers um so that you could have something to work with um i've also pulled the board of registrars because that's something that needs to be done and basically um the opinions that came up were sorry to interrupt we need a microphone close at the end you want this one? No, this one. No, I just want to make sure that yep, people. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So um, basically, there was a split. Two people um, voted for mail in balloting and not early voting, and two were more inclined to vote if there had to be anything for early voting, um, an abbreviated version of early voting. Because there was not an attitude to. Can you speak up because they can't hear you? Okay, behind. sorry. Can you repeat that again, Larry? I'm sorry. What you just said, you pulled the... Um... The registrars? Yeah. Two opinions were that we should have early voting by mail, mail and ballots, okay. and no early voting in person. And two said that if we had to have anything, it would be um, early voting, but an abbreviated version, because we do have the latitude 
to um, create whatever schedule we want for the building. We don't have to have like a week's worth or two weeks worth. We could do two days worth, one day's worth, and we could do just mornings or whatever. Um, we do have that latitude. So, um, which would, if we did that, it would definitely cut back on the cost. So it's really kind of um, what the thoughts are of this board and moving um, forward. So am I correct in saying that the question before the board is whether we do a formal mailing announcing that early voting exists in lieu of someone just asking for an absentee ballot? No, uh, how it will work because this is a state election year. Um, we already have 2,100 people that have asked for ballots. So that 21 is a given, 2,100 rather. So they would automatically get a mail-in ballot. Um, and the only thing I can tell you is that the idea of how many are gonna come back is another story because even with the primary, people are very interested in the presidential race and so on and so forth, but in the primary, we only got about 35% back. So we have to send them out, but we didn't get them back. So, um, I mean, that that may or may not weigh into this, the, the idea of doing this or not. Um, but we would automatically have to send it out to that 2100, and that's today. The cards are still coming in for the rest of the year. So whatever we end up with before the date would be the number that we would have to send out. Even if somebody does it, like, you know, on June 1st, we'd still have to send it out. So no matter what, we have to send out 2,100 ballots. That would be the minimum right now. If we vote to have it. If we vote right. to have it, yes. Okay, if we vote. Yeah, if you opt out, then we don't have to do that. Um, and then as far as early voting goes, we again can make the schedule up as, as we please. Questions from the board? Um, I, I, I don't really have any questions because I kind of been there, done that with this because I did it as the town clerk. Um, I just think that from what I've gotten from the residents <laughs> that I've talked to and the residents who have contacted me about this, one of the most important things that they want to have is they want to have the option to have their ballots mailed to them. <clears throat> Whether it's that when they say ballots all year, I want every election, they want it for the local as well as the the states. And I think that that would be, a, might be a benefit for our local elections, because we know that local elections tend to not be as great as we would like them to be, you know, unless you have a huge issue going on and then everybody jumps out to vote. But I think having the mail-in ballots, which people really want, is, uh, might be a plus for us to have a better uh, recording of votes for for our local elections. I feel that it's uh, something we should do. I, you know, people want the the ballots at home, and the state has said we want you to do mail in, you know, mail in ballots to to people at home. And so I I don't see a problem whether to do the early voting, the in inside early voting for our local election. No, I think that's ridiculous. You should not do that. Crazy to spend that type of money to set up for a local election to do yeah. early voting. But I definitely think we need to have those ballots sent out to the people who have requested them. I think that's very important. I just want to clarify one thing. Um, absentee balloting will be as usual, right. regardless of what we do here. So just so you know. Right. So is this going to be the same as absentee ballot, just send it out? Is that what you're trying to say? I'm sorry. Absentee ballot has to be requested, whereas the Mail in is anyone who's requested who would be obligated. No, to Mr. Lodabashian was suggesting that we send it out to everybody. Anybody well, anyone who's like, requested it. Anyone who requested it. Okay, thank you, you know, a lot of people request um, okay. they when the, they fill out the card, it's like, I want a ballot for all of elections, <laughs> meaning also that your local elections. So yeah. they, they, if those people request it, they should have. It. I don't think we should be not sending them out. No. And, and as we go down the line here on the little paper, um, the other thing was a uh, motion to hold the polling hours. I think polling hours should be 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. We shouldn't be changing that or deviating from that at all. That's what's been in this town for 
75 years. And yes, during COVID, it was, it was a test to, you know, to do it. And it was, I, you know, I congratulate everyone who worked during COVID who had to deal with elections because it was not an easy task to do. And I understand that, but we're not in COVID and, and our polls should be open for the, the residents who want to vote at 7 a.m., be it 5, 10, 15, it doesn't matter. They want to vote at 7 a.m. and we should do it. And we've always done it. So I feel very strongly about that. Anything else from the table before we go to the public? I have one question. Did we even look at it in its, um, what's the turnout rate in its, uh, when we open early and then when we open later, you know, it's um, like, you know, it's from the 78 turnout, right. then, you know, it's uh, what was it before that? It was uh, 10 to 12 to so we, 12 we to had, That's how we, have to, we did noon until late. Yeah. But so last, what's the turnout? Last year we did, and we, we yeah. did get more votes. Okay. But it was, you know, it, it depends on the contests, but actually as well. It is conceivable that we have uncontested races, correct? Yeah. And like that's right. Okay. I mean, I struggle with incurring costs for uncontested races. But yes. is there anyone from the audience who would like to chime in? Okay. Um, having seen your name, you raised your hand earlier. Would you please identify yourself and tell us what you think? Sure. I'm Joyce Notine from uh, 24 Chamberlain Road. And your thoughts? I'm deeply concerned about the uh, board's pattern and practice of limiting access to voting uh, in early elections. Every town around here, uh, Blackstone, Franklin, Norfolk, Medway, has mail-in ballots for local elections. I think it's outrageous that that is not happening here. This is the first time to, this has been brought, I'm sorry. This is the first time that this issue has been brought before this board. I wrote to you last October, and you never responded. Uh, additionally, I called in January and spoke with Hillary and asked if I could bring it to the board. And she said this was my first opportunity to. Um, so my concern is that before this, there was never any discussion about the limiting of hours. It was just done. So I don't think the board has a strong interest in uh, expanding the voting in town. Additionally, um, I'm concerned that after, in the June 5th meeting that you had, um, <clears throat> the early voting was canceled and that was the only uh, limit to access. The town clerk on his own, apparently, canceled mail-in voting. I don't, I have the minute right here. Uh, I that's the case, and we'll let Larry respond when you're finished. If, if, well, okay, I have the minutes of that meeting, and it was not voted on, so I'm happy to give anybody the minutes of the meeting here. Um, so I guess I'm, I'm concerned about the pattern in the town of, uh, for some reason. I don't know whether it's too much trouble or whatever, uh, limiting access. Additionally, I noted that handicapped parking signs are not out at the polling uh, place at the high school. Um, they're just not put out and haven't been for a number of years. There is a handicapped walkway down to the polling place, but it doesn't meet state requirements. It doesn't have a railing, so the people who are in a walker or a wheelchair and are going downhill, 
they may be in for quite a ride. Um, hand railings need to be there as well as handicapped parking. So it, it's just generally a, a feeling I get from the board that there's very little interest in voting or expanding voting. Thank you. Um, if you're interested, I can give each of you a copy of the minutes of the January, I'm sorry, June 5th meeting to that demonstrates that there was no vote to cancel mail-in voting. Larry, can you comment on Yeah, that? first of all, it's not canceling anything. Ex excuse no. me, Larry? I can't. I said it's not a matter of canceling anything. It's an option that the town has, number one. Number two, we have gone over the June 5th meeting. We've gone over that in quite a number of times. I supplied you with every bit of information that you asked for. It was a little bit of a glitch because it wasn't actually recorded as such on the, in those minutes. But the vote was taken. The town clerk did not unilaterally make the decision. Well, as we know, if it's not in the minutes, it didn't happen. I understand, but it did happen. Um, and <clears throat> the as far as the handicap signs go, yes, the handicap signs were not up. They're going to be up. We had a meeting. We ordered, we're ordering new signs. And the reason they weren't there is because this is the DPW now. They, for whatever reason, they couldn't find the signs. There was a change in personnel and somebody put them somewhere. They finally decided that they had gone to some school thing. I don't know, wherever they're, wherever they keep their signs. Sure. It hasn't been, uh, they haven't been out for a number of elections, Larry. Not just the past one. Well, that's all part and parcel of the whole thing. But that's that's actually the GPW that is. So we we met and we're, we remedied that. We're going to have our signs there. Yeah, we did have a uh, meeting with the director after Larry and I had talked and put together a nice schematic to show where everything should yeah. go. So it should never be a problem yeah. again. So that, that should be rectified. Ideally, the bus lane should be the handicap access yeah. and not have to park. Honestly, park I'm, I'm going to be very frank. I don't believe it meets standards either because there's not enough parking and it's not as, as accessible as it should be. Yeah. But that's something that we're going to have to work on longer. <laughs> It's always been the bus lines. Mm -hmm. The handicap signs have always been there forever and ever and ever. Until they went missing. Until they went missing, I guess. Yeah. Scott said we need to do a better job on the handicap access. It's, it's going to be a remedy this time for sure. More important, I think, more generally, is, is the um, mail in voting, um, which every, every town, even Blackstone, um, has. Why we don't, it's, I have no idea. I'd love to, love to find out. Okay, do you want to go next? Just your name for the record and excuse me. Yes, Ed, Ed Featherston, 54 Laurel Lane, Bellingham resident for almost 40, 40 years now. Um, I wanted to talk in, in support of making sure we do continue the mail-in voting. I'm one of those people that asked for all of the ballots. My wife is one of those people that asked for all of the ballots. We still will go down, but we want to be able to have the option to be able to do it because our work schedules fluctuate and there are times that we can get there and it could be last minute and there are times that we can't. So having that option is important. One of the other options for me, and uh, Ms. Odebashian had touched on it was maintaining our seven to seven hours. Um, the last general that we had that changed, I went down. I hadn't realized that it changed. I went down when I was available because my work hours did not make it so I could get there for the hours that it had been changed to. And I was just used to seven o'clock in the morning, I can show up and I can vote. <clears throat> and that didn't happen. Um, I would think we want to consider that also given the, the amount of people that we've been adding to the town in the various apartments and everything that have been built because of the train station. I mean, that's part of what the state has encouraged. So a lot of those people that might potentially be voting are getting on the trains and not getting home in time for the seven o'clock closing. And their only option would be 
to get there for seven when it opens up. So I think that's something we should consider also. Yeah. Uh, just for the recording, I think the hours were changed to 12 to 8. Yeah. Now they're, they're normal is 7 to 8. Seven to eight. Yeah. Right. But and as far as the early voting to, to, to the other point, I mean, for a local election, that does seem like overkill. But I think the mail-in and the hours, one of the things we've talked about for years in this town is trying to encourage more mm -hmm. turnout. And so making it easier for people to be able to vote, especially for the local election, because we all know what our turnouts look like in the local elections here. And anything that could help increase that number, even a little bit, is a positive from my perspective. Larry, if I could ask just for clarity, if someone were to mail in their votes, um, is it a postmark issue or versus an absentee ballot re request? In terms of the old way it used to be, if you knew you were going to be out of town, yeah. you would request an absentee yeah. ballot that has to be requested by X date. There's a, it's versus... a different application, and it's actually a different ballot. Um, and the postmark is the deadlines have to be set up, and and there's more of an opportunity with absentee ballot, and you can vote longer. The cutoff for mail-in ballots is a little bit shorter. Because it has to be received prior to... No, it has to be received by 8 o'clock the night. The night before. No, of the election. Of the election. Yeah. yeah. And when the polls close. For absentee? For both. Oh. But obviously the mail post office is delivering to us at 12, 1 o'clock in the, in the day. No, we're not getting... Earlier than that, but they will bring ballots over during the day. But okay. I'm going to tell you, that's, that was a real problem with this last election. We got cards, the individual cards that came in requesting. Um, this is an example. We got 2,000 of them, close to 2,000, um, in a bucket one day that had been postmarked in January, and we didn't get them till February 14th. Once we mailed them out, you know, and even the ballots, once we mail them out, we have no control over them. It's the post office that has to come mm -hmm. So, um, and that's another thing that people have to understand because some people even didn't even get them at all. Yeah. And then they came to vote. And of course, it was our fault because, yeah. uh, you know, once we mail them out, that's, that yeah. we, we lose all yeah. consciousness of them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, right, so we'll come back to you, but just so everyone can speak once and then I'll circle back. It's just that I can't hear him. Okay. Um, I can not too much I can do about that. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're, that's, that's fair. Does this, does this just go over? That, no, that's what I'm doing here. Yeah. yeah, maybe if you could just, when respond. Okay. For sure. Mr. Martinez. Yes, uh, Don Martinez, 334 Maple Street. Uh, just a couple of questions. Larry, I'm curious, you know, uh, Mr. Featherston talked about the apartments. Has there been a, a large increase in voter registration in the last couple of months? There's been from the new areas? Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, that's great. Right. Okay, that's, I'm just, yeah. the other thing I just want to bring up in the, in the last primary, um, I received, well, let me just step back. You're all aware that the Medway Post Office and the Bellingham Post Office is combined, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's caused an increase in problem with me getting the wrong mail or mail that's significantly delayed. In the last primary, two weeks prior to the vote, I received a piece of mail from a Medway address, for a Medway address, and for a Farm Street address. I brought that and I just dumped them back in the post office. My concern is that we don't have enough integrity in mail and vote. I, I, I understand we need to open hours, if in, but really you can't rely on the postal service, you know, because your, your chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Our weakest link in mail and voting is the current postal service. I'm not saying Bellingham Postal Service is not any good. What I'm saying is that historically, uh, it's a problem. And Mr. Larry just brought it up, Mr. Scott just brought it up that we have a problem. I mean, for me to get a piece of mail that was, should have gone to a Medway address and another piece of mail that should have gone to Farm Street and they show up in my mailbox, I mean, the average person might have just thrown them away in the trash where I actually went to the post office and dropped him back in the slot. So I just think that the board needs to think about, you know, and I respect the opinions here a lot, but if for seven to eight and then, and then early voting, I think that's enough opportunity for a local and a federal and a state election to go seven to eight with plenty of advertisement and early election here. I know it's a pain, I know it's costly, but 
There's also, to me, I've seen enough elements of I'm concerned with fraud, mm -hmm. I'm with a lot of different things. I don't want to get into a debate, but I'm just not in favor of it whatsoever. And, and I know other people feel the same way as I do. Um, uh, Mr. Hamway. <clears throat> I agree with Mr. Martinez. Uh, Ken Hamway, 39 Weathersfield Road. Early voting, absentee voting, and let's make Let's get back to one day on election day. We've made elections a seasonal event. If they go on for two months, and we've heard of ballot harvesting, we've heard of nursing homes where people are voting, and people prey on those people, and it's called ballot harvesting. They force them to sign ballots. There's so much fraud in this mail-in voting. Let's go back to one day, early voting and absentee voting, and clear this all up. Was there anyone else who wanted to make an initial comment? Larry? I also just wanted to clarify, um, as Mr. Martinez, I know, said about state elections and federal elections, we have no option there. The only place we have an option is with the local election. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ed, did you raise your hand again? Yes. Yep. Um, <clears throat> just to address some of the points that were brought up around that. Um, the first one is understand that absentee ballots also get sent out in the mail. My kids went to college and got their absentee ballots in the mail. I have yet to hear of one substantial case of mail-in voter fraud in Massachusetts. There's lots of concerns about it. I have yet to hear of one valid case. Um, I asked our town clerk, have we had any cases of voter fraud with the mail-in ballots that we've had in town? And I understand people's concerns about it. But being concerned about something that isn't happening to me is not a reason to stop doing it. That's my personal opinion. Um, Mr. Soda, yes. Just to somebody who is part of the law, <laughs> um, the one thing, the reason why we gave a local option for the Board of Selectmen to make this decision is because in the federal and state elections, the, the, the period of time for certification is, is different. So you have time for those ballots to come in. If it's a close election, those ballots can come in. You can contest it. You can open those ballots. You have a you have the reason we did the local ballot mail in. And I'm not either way, whatever you decide to do here, it's your call. And that's why we gave you the option. Part of the reasoning for the local election was an option is because you, you don't have that same span of certification. So if you have a very close town election, you get those ballots at 7.59 from the post office. They decide, oh, geez, we just got these in. We're, we're going to bring them. Or they get here at 8.01 or whatever. There could be, you know, you could be back and forth and you have 200 ballots and it's a close town election. You could have, you know, we, you've got some issues there. That's why it was a local mm -hmm. option, too, because it is a lot of extra cost versus in state elections and, and um, federal elections. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of cost there, but that those were the reasons why we did it. So just keep that in mind is why we did that option, gave you the power to do so, because it, there is a major cost factor. It's a little bit different than a general. And, and I will just say this last primary across the state, early and mail and voting, mail and voting across the state because it was a state election was higher. Now, obviously, March is a time of year. A lot of people travel, so it was an increase. Yeah. No, mail and voting is catching up. So. I, I just had a question about the law. Mr. Soder brought up a, a, an interesting point. Um, the let's just as an example, hypothetically, it's 8, 10 p.m. and voting is closed, and the postal service runs over with a big bucket of ballots that Larry hasn't had a, a chance. Are those null and void? They can't. They can they still be counted as votes? Or at eight o'clock after that's it, and even we'll say it's a close race. Those don't count toward a recount if somebody asks for a recount. I'll tell you, if you, take it, if you take it to court and yeah. it's a close race, and you guys have a close race, and you decide to do a recount, the court is Secretary of State's going to rule it. You're going to be in court. They're going to rule it. The Attorney General will probably tell you that, yes, you've got to accept those ballots, even if they came in at the evening. So, so if, the, if the town clerk said, hey, no, we're not going to count them, then you can still go to court. 
One of the observation to the town clerk. Yeah. Yeah. One observation yeah. is our post office is closed at five yeah. o'clock at night. Right. There's no one there to deliver ballots yeah. at six well, o'clock or seven o'clock. Generally, get in are people dropping them off, and they do drop them off. Yeah. As they drop them off, we have someone here um, processing them, and then whoever is at the. That's why I go back and forth all the time. It's always bringing back ballots back and forth. So they get processed here and then processed at the three tabulator at the polls. No, no. So for the most part, unless you know, even if it arrives at eight, if say let's say it arrives and it's stamped in at seven fifty-five, yeah. it will still be counted that night. It's just a hand count. Oh. Yeah. So now, granted, if if there's you know thousand of them, then that's going to be long hand. And, you know, but, I just have another question. This isn't in any way. This is a question. So could you come back here and there's a, a dozen ballots yeah. here. Um, and where where are those ballots? Are they in your office? Some dropped them off because you're this is closed, right? This building's closed. No, no, no. There's always somebody here. Okay, until eight o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. So great. I'm, so they get dropped off, and then they hand them to you. How how do we know that? And and I know you wouldn't do this, Larry, but how do we know? Is there somebody with you to make sure that the twelve that you grabbed or the twelve that show up at the high school <coughs> more for protection of you? Yeah, no, I don't want someone to say, hey. There was 30, now there's only 12. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, they, they, um, Just we want the integrity of the vote to be spot they, on. They get stamped in here. They also get heated to what we call the state system. Okay. That they've been returned. And returned it as, as a ballot. Mm -hmm. um, then they go into the safe until we start to count, and they would be hand counts. Anything that doesn't get put through at the polls is a hand okay. count. Okay, thank you. So okay. I'll give you an example of Douglas that just happened in the prime range of the post office. There was the next day races got certified because the the post office you had a postmark with the right time on it to be here that gets counted so there is that like mr martinez and mr hamley mentioned there is that opportunity for about it didn't happen and the town clerk was closed she had to come they had to come back in to redo their Certified counts. It was a little bit of a. So we didn't get the certification. It's almost three thirty. We didn't get the notice. It wasn't certified. It was three thirty in the afternoon. And so those races, and it really wasn't a huge turnout. It was just those mail-in ballots came in with stamps before eight o'clock on election day. And one other thing, um, last time around in twenty twenty two, we were counting ballots like ten days beyond election day. This year they. I don't know if they're going to do it for the general election, but for the primary, they cut it off at eight o'clock. So depending on that, that's another factor. If they're going to allow us to count beyond, then you know we have more time to count. But then those are all hand counts. Yeah. And, and I just want to point out again, all of the yes. scenarios we're talking about can also happen with absentee ballots. Mm -hmm. My my children, like I said, when they were away for college had absentee ballots sent out to them. They were both out of state, mailed them back. If we have town registered voters who are members of the military, the absentee ballots would be mailed to them and they would be mailed back. And all of the scenarios we're talking about from, from a postmark perspective would still be in play from that perspective. Um, I just have a statement to make as somebody who, while I was in the service, used absentee voting. Uh, the numbers are probably significantly less for the absentee ballot mm -hmm. than they are for, for the general, you know, regular mail-in voting. Am I wrong in that assumption? Well, military ballots are handled differently. Right, but the same with, with college, with college. Yeah, people in college, yeah. They would get some I mean, but what do you have, maybe 20 of them? Oh, yeah, okay. They, well, no, there's more than 20. Right, but, but compared to the 21,000, 2100 2, that go out, um, I am, I, I, I know people are probably going to be happy. I am not a supporter of, of mail-in voting. If you wouldn't put $500 in an envelope and mail it to yourself, why would you put a ballot? That's one of the most sacred um, acts that you have as, as an as American is voting. Um, you know, I know this is just a town election, but it, it, it's an election and town elections actually affect you more than, than national elections or state elections. True. So um, I, I know people aren't going to be happy, but I, I'm outright saying I am not supporting mail and voting for the, the elections. No, I have nothing else for Yes. 
I've heard um, people's objections about the mail-in voting, but the st statistics are that there is not a problem. We've heard all kinds of um, what ifs, maybes, it could be. But in the local elections that we have had in the state, there hasn't been any problems with the mail-in voting. And I know because I've asked um, whether certification is another issue. If it comes in late, it can be certified. But according to the Secretary of State's office, I think mail-in ballots have to be um, stamped by eight o'clock in the, the morning of the election. Mm -hmm. That's my... That night, maybe, yes. that night, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Okay. Did you, did you put so, um, the fact that a mail-in ballot may show up at somebody's house that didn't order it or ask for it or was misdelivered doesn't mean that ballot is going to be illegally filled out and um, mailed. So the responsibility still is on the person to make an honest uh, uh, vote. Now, if there's a problem uh, with people illegally voting that nobody's reported, you know, that's another issue. But we don't have, we haven't had that uh, problem. Just to, in response to that, I don't know what you consider a problem, but we do have at least a hundred ballots that were returned late and couldn't be counted. And the interesting thing is couldn't, that it couldn't be counted. Could not be counted because they arrived too late. Okay. Well, that to me is a problem because the, the post office didn't get them here. Okay. Yeah. So if they're not stamped, then they're not. They are stamped. They're stamped, and it shows that they were oh. they came in too late. So they're not counted. So to me, that's a bit of a problem because you know that's a fair number of votes that you're losing out on. Now the other thing, and, and and again, I don't want to get into any debates or anything either, but I'm going to bring this up because I think it's pertinent to, to what the discussion that we're having now. When you say that ballots don't end up, I I have people that have gotten several cards. They reported that they've gotten several cards and could, if they wish, get other back more ballots, but they don't. But the more important thing is, and this goes way back to registration. The and I say this all the time, our workload has changed dramatically. And one of the places it has changed is in the registration of voters. When in the past, when people went to the RV, they had a choice whether or not they wanted to select a to be registered to vote. Then they were given the opportunity to omit that option and say, you know, I don't want to be registered. Now they just automatically get registered and automatic means automatic. Every transaction that goes through the RMV and other agencies gets registered. So when you go to the RMV to renew your license, we get a registration for you. And then we have to go, which makes our list very long. And we have to go in and say that it's a duplicate. Um, they also had a problem with changing party designation with that, but they've corrected that problem. But the issue is we have already had seven people come forward. We had one just today, which will have to be number eight, to say that they were registered to vote unknowingly and that they are not eligible to vote. So that's just a way that, you know, when you when you say that, you know, we, there's not been any reports of fraud and so on and so forth, we don't necessarily know that these people are being registered automatically. And they are what? Automatically. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so they don't even know they're being registered. And then when the cards are sent out, they get a card. So some of us, some of them come back and tell us, and some people don't. So th there's a potential there that we may not know about for quite a while. So you're saying there's a potential to be registered improperly. And voting, and ultimately voting. I don't see where it goes to ultimately no, voting. 
because the, the possibility is to make a, a an honest vote. Uh, otherwise, if you're voting illegally. I think that's yeah. correct. That's what I'm trying to say, but that may not show up for quite a time. You know. um, I think we've heard a lot. Um, I think the potential exists to mail to a nursing home and someone gather up all the votes and mail them back. My personal feeling is that election day is election day. And if you do want to uh, vote early, that you have the option of absentee ballot. And I realize that sometimes we just agree to disagree on certain things. There is no nursing home in Bellingham. Huh? There is no nursing home in Bellingham. I'm just saying national. Oh, okay. It's just a perspective. Yeah. I would also say that over the past 15 years that I've been on the board uh, multiple times that there are uh, races that are uncontested and let's say I think it is an unnecessary expense and I would be voting uh, against advanced mailing of voting. I am in favor of the hours <laughs> but well, I agree I, we don't. I think that uh, that's 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 really a mistake to do because I feel that every person has the right to request a ballot. And whether, I can't it be, whether it be a local election or a state election. So somewhere along the line, we have to fine tune this. So whether it's we make it so that people who want to have a ballot sent to their home has to request it in person for each election, which is what they think they're doing now. So obviously that doesn't work, which that's what the Secretary of State said. If you request a ballot for every every election, you should get a ballot for every election. And I understand what you're saying about the registration and the cards. It is a nightmare. It's been a nightmare since Mr. Galvin decided it was a great idea. And you're right. We you get a ton of cards from the registry of people who hit that check mark and they said there's no check mark anymore. No check mark. <laughs> but they, they they all say, Oh, yep, we're registered. And they're already registered to vote. It's it's been a nightmare for for years. It, it, this is nothing new. And if you talk to town clerks, which I'm still in the association and I do talk to them, it's a nightmare in every city and town. This is nothing new. How did they solve it? I don't know. Maybe get rid of Bill Galvin, but that's my opinion. But um, I really firmly believe that everyone should have the right to request a ballot to be mailed to their house if they want it. I don't care what your reason is. I don't care if you're sitting on your couch and you don't feel like driving your car down to the school, well, then you sh they should have the opportunity. And I don't think it should be just state elections or federal elections. It should be even our local elections. And I really firmly believe, my opinion, that you might get a better turnout if people have the opportunity to request that ballot at home because they're not going to make it in time to, to vote. And, and that's how I feel. And yeah, you could say $4,500 in mail is Google, but to some people, this is important and they want to be able to vote and this is how they want to vote. And I, and I believe it's, it's um, I, I think for your local election, it is not going to be the cost factor as it is for the state and federal elections. And I think there's a way that you could maybe fine tune this. You know, I, I, I really believe that this is important. And I, I am 100% behind. People should have the opportunity to select and vote at home. I believe we've talked out the issue. Mm -hmm. I'll entertain a motion at this time to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. First and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. 4-0. Uh, we have before us four recommended motions. Um, we can take each one. First motion is a motion to conduct or not conduct early in-person voting for the municipal town election set for Tuesday, June 4th, 2024. Do we have a motion one way or the other? Uh, I'll motion not to do the early voting in person for the municipal town election for June 4th, 2024. First and second, any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Four zero. Second motion is a motion to conduct or not conduct voting by mail prior to the municipal town election set for Tuesday, 
June 4th, 2024. I'll entertain a motion. motion. A motion to conduct the voting by mail prior to the minutes of town election set for June, Tuesday, June 4th, 2024. Since you're voting to it probably to, voting to, to conduct um can voting we just by put mail. In a little caveat about financing it, just in case we need the money. Understood. So that, I, I gotta let's see if you first. Do we have a second? Hearing none, is there another motion? Motion to not conduct voting by mail prior to the municipal final election sent for Tuesday, June 4th, 2024. I will second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 3 1. Third item is a motion to hold polling hours from, uh, I presume, 7 to 8. Yeah, I'll make a motion to hold polling hours from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Tuesday, June 4th, 2024 at the Bellingham High School Gymnasium for the municipal town election. Second. Oh, and, and the place where I said to fund it. Well, the, so what we should do that. That's, that's, fun. that's in the budget. Oh, that's in the budget. The mailing part of the budget. So we have a first, we second. Have a second by Mr. Shahini. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Four zero. And motion to allow for police presence in municipal town election set for Tuesday, June 4th, 2024. I have a question first. Please. So what do you, you, you don't use more than a couple police for the municipal election, right? Yeah, we'll have probably maybe four. Right. Um, but you don't need that many for those. Right. Well, well, actually, the school's going to be closed, so we can use just a few. Yeah, yeah. I like to have somebody outside though for because of right. the handicap stuff. Yeah. Right, right. The motion to allow the police presence at the municipal town election set for Tuesday, June 4th, 2024. Second. First and second, and all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Yeah. Moving on with Larry, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you all oh, for I, coming. I want to make one thing clear you know, is uh, just make sure everyone understands people if they want to request the um absentee ballot they can still do it they can still vote so just you know make sure everyone knows that and i think the people that already requested ballots the 20 and they, they're, they're going to receive still the still so getting their ballots requested you will still no I, oh no, no? no oh. That, that, the 21. oh that, that, does. that was the question i had for those of us that said i want all mail-in ballots including local elections that would not be part of it because it's not an absentee ballot at that point so so I would not get even though I checked the box that said local elections, all mail in ballots. The legislature said that it's a local exemption and that vote that we just took would exclude that. Okay. Is there some kind of notice going to go out to people that check that off expecting it's going to show up and now it's not going to show up? I mean, because do when we program. all checked it off, we assumed yeah. it was going to be coming. Yeah. You better word it very carefully because people are not going to understand it. Thank you. The next part of our agenda is uh, fire personnel fiscal year 25 budget override discussion vote. Keith, would you like to join us? Sure. And anyone you'd like to vote? Bring them on. Let me just. Uh... Dennis, could I indulge you indulge us with just a summary from the last meeting? Sure. Um, essentially, uh, the chief had requested within his budget six uh, new um, paramedic position, paramedic only position. Um, he does. Uh, there are two in the department uh, that were previously funded, or two positions that were funded, and the board approved the. The new paramedic program that the chief has gone forward and and uh, hired uh, two new paramedics. So that that's in the works. The chief is looking for an additional six personnel. Along with outfitting those personnel, the budget number was uh, just over six hundred thousand dollars to do that. And the discussion essentially was that there isn't a means um, within current funding within the revenues that we have to fund those positions. So if we were going to look to fund six positions, um, it would require uh, 
additional funds, i.e., an override uh, to present to, to the public or cut six or seven hundred thousand dollars in existing positions from other departments. Um, there was discussion about increasing it to eight, uh, eight positions with benefits that would bring the cost up to almost a million dollars. Uh, the six with benefits would be right around um, $750,000 all in. So that's where we were. That's where we were at. Uh, and we do have the different analysis um, from the Department of Local Services that shows the impact on the various uh, the various amounts. Yeah. yeah. As well as a ballot question, proposed ballot question from the KP law, which is very basic. So, right. um, Chief, if you could fill in the blanks just so, so I can just people watching on TV or um, zooming in or in the audience. Uh, you and I have had some discussions or just historically that uh, around about 2013, 2014, the fire department went from four per shift to six per shift. Uh, five to six. Five to six, five at six. which time uh, we call, went, call we had, was around 1,950, give yep. or take. And last year, we're still remaining at six personnel per shift. And we uh, did 3,110 calls last year. So roughly, we've gone up 1160 mm -hmm. calls, which is 1900 is about a 40 percent increase, roughly 38 percent. 38 percent. So, over the last 10 years, call volume's gone up 38 percent, um, averaging about nine, nine runs a day, about right nine runs a day. And each run to the hospital consumes how much time? Dependent. Um, it's a double edged sword. Um, it depends where we transport to. So if it's the local hospital, it could be probably an hour on a good day for turnaround time, depending if we have to, what we call hold the wall. I'm very cautious how I say that. Um, but their emergency facilities getting overwhelmed with medical care. Our personnel may be at the hospital for an hour and a half to two hours holding the wall of the patient on our stretcher. Um, if there's a trauma and it's on the north side, they've got to go to UMass. If it's on the south side, you end up going to Rhode Island. You can guarantee at least a two-hour uh, vacancy of an ambulance slash fire crew at that point. So, <clears throat> and what's happening more and more is we're having more and more doubles, triples, quadruple calls. Catherine Provost worked uh, Friday. <clears throat> you had four calls right in a row. Yeah. You had four calls in a row in a mutual aid ambulance in town. And um, one called to be in a patient refusal, so we're able to clear the resources up from there. Now both ambulances are out. We have a two-person fire truck. That's not adequate coverage for a town of our size kind of our demographics. Um, by adding the additional six personnel that would give us eight personnel per shift, that's two medic onlys per shift. Those two medic onlys right now would run out of fire headquarters and staff ambulance number two. That would allow a captain and two to staff a fire engine. And we would move one additional person down south, which is a whole other area we haven't even really discussed. Then we only have two personnel right now down south. And again, response times, if you've seen to our report, uh, you're looking at anywhere from eight to 10 minutes from headquarters to get south. And if headquarters is out and south is going to come north, you're looking at anywhere up to 16 minute response times. We need to cut these response times down. We need to be getting the proper level of care. The town has grown. The fire department has not. And the plan we're bringing forward is to try to add additional staffing to meet the current needs and demands on the services. So we would be adding one additional firefighter um, if we the two medic only per group. We would shift one additional firefighter. We would run three out of the south station at this point, which right now we're only running two. So you would still, two would go out on the ambulance. You would still have one person available to drive an engine as needed. Correct. It's not the save all be all, but it's a little bit better than we're now. Because right now, south goes on. They're just going on a run right now. I don't know what district is going out. If you take really one second, um, that's district two, so they're up here. But if district one was going out, which would be south, you just lost your fire engine coverage and it has to come out of headquarters. So again, you're looking at an eight or a 10 minute response time, depending where in South we go. How far down into the socket line or over to the rental right line that we go at this point. Questions from the board? No, no one fire, the adding one firefighter down South is essentially just a bandaid. Yes. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a step in the right, the right, right direction, direction, but it's a patch on all. Right. And, you know, we're, we're, we're going to, right, correct. Right. Right. Question. I'm. I, I know exactly what I'm doing. So Dennis, just for clarity, um, 
I'll use the terms direct and indirect cost. So the direct cost for six staff members is X and the indirect costs being. Right. So the direct cost of the six as the chief had budgeted it was $629,000, I believe. That is correct. The exact number was $629. The approximate indirect cost is $25,000 uh, per employee. So that, if we go with raw numbers, mm -hmm. that's $779, but for is there a roundness of numbers where it's I think, seven, in the I think 750 if you round it to 750 <laughs> you're, 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 you're fine. Right. and for so for people watching in the audience if we are looking at the 700,000 level mm -hmm. and the 800,000 level the cost on the average home is defined by the department of revenue would yield uh so 800,000 yields Eighty dollars and sixty nine cents a year, yeah. right? And seven hundred thousand yields seventy two twenty. Yeah. Yep. So you're talking yes. about seventy six dollars on Bellingham's average home. Obviously, the warehouses would pay significantly more. Mm -hmm. Um, and depending on where you live in town, based on the value, I believe the average is three sixty eight. Um, it says there that, yeah, I believe it's four and change. That 445, right? Yep, yep. If that's what it says, that's what you can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The average single family home in Bellingham is valued at 424,679. Right, yep. That's and the right. cost would be so if you're Home was valued in excess of four twenty four. You would pay more than the seventy six dollars, and if it was less, you would pay some factor less. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The goal of the or the role of the Bellingham Select Board is not to vote for the override. The board, the board's role is to vote to put it to the voters. So that being the case, I will entertain a motion to put to the voters. An override of seven hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars to be voted at the June June election. June election. So moved. Well, I'm sorry. Well, the election. I'm sorry. The election. You said at the June yeah. election. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're going about. Right. Is that for six? Is that for six paramedics or eight? Yes, it is. For the higher. Yes, so instead of going for a million plus, we would take the lowest financial option and absorb any added costs as part of the budget from free cash. So we have a first, and I don't know if gets credit for the second, but since the Shane gets the second, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, none. Uh, gentlemen, we thank you for the work and putting this information together. Dennis and Heidi for, and yeah. Beth, if you were involved in that, for the Department of Revenue, uh, that discussion. And again, for anyone watching, uh, this is a decision of the voters. I think we need to do some education as to where we were 11 years ago, yeah. uh, where we are today, the size of the town, the number of runs, and more information will follow. I would um, like to put that up to Michael, please. If anybody has any questions, anyone listening, um, please feel free to reach out mm -hmm. to myself, the Deputy Captain Provost, um, and we'll do everything in our power to answer their questions and show what the extra six additional people can do. Yeah. If memory serves me, I think oh, yeah. we included it, obviously, the, the million and a half, there was the form of the school committee. Um, I would ask perhaps we would do uh, information nights and make this room available okay, yeah, exactly. to um, give a brief overview so that when we go to town meeting, at least people would have had multiple opportunities to hear it for the first time. We can do that. I just think when it comes to what they're asking for, you really can't put a price. Uh, on it, like getting an ambulance, getting properly trained individuals to your home at the, your your most vulnerable moment yep. in your in your time of need. You know the 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 extra property tax. You'll you'll definitely know it's worth it. Right. You know after after one if you have to call them once. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's, 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 that's on that topic. You know. I'm sorry, sir. I was saying that on that topic. You know, just to you know jump on that. It's obviously our main. Um, Concern is obviously we want to we want to keep the residents safe and sound as well as we want to keep the safe and sound too. You know, it's uh, it's it's uh, I think this will be a 
good way to, to just to initiate it. It's a start a new program and then you know get it off the ground. Wait, but the captain says it's a step in the yeah. right direction. It is absolutely a step in the right direction, and I would like to say almost a thank you to the board, to Dennis for the support and supporting us to move forward. It's definitely something we need for the residents to continue to offer a good service. Absolutely. So thank you. The we're all set with your part, but the next item on the agenda uh, was a proposal by Mr. Frame, which I thought has a lot of value. Um, and it ties into this uh, for concerns about our seniors who may have issues. Oh, yeah. Um, we had previous discussions. The legislature had uh, voted to authorize to, for us to increase the senior tax work off from 1500 to as high as 2000. Um, and although my numbers may not be exact, I would throw out some information that we are um, currently authorized to go as high as 150,000. Yes, as far as funds that we have. Right. And at the most recent use, uh, we utilized just over 130,000, and that we had a little more than 100 residents who were capped, I think it was 98 actually, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, at the 1,500. So the proposal that was offered by Dennis, where we had an additional eighteen odd thousand dollars that went unused, that at this point it would be beneficial to consider raising the senior tax work up to seventeen hundred dollars, which would be more than double what a senior could potentially pay with the override. Mm -hmm. So if someone had a house valued at eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars, the two hundred dollars would cover the oh, right. amount oh, right. yeah, and absolutely. that would utilize at least for the hundred plus who are capped mm -hmm. now to use up the 150,000 without cutting into our tax offer. So that was a proposal by Dennis. Yeah, I think we, we estimated that the cost of that's about $20,000 if every person that maxed out their senior tax work off took advantage of it, it would cost the town about an additional $20,000. That would be, you know, uh, raised when we set the tax rate, yeah. obviously, in the fall. Yeah, and so it, where that program runs from December 1st to November 30th, prior to setting the fiscal 2026 tax rate, we would probably do a better assessment as to how many residents were taking advantage right. of it and whether some modification of the 150,000 needs to be taken into consideration. 150 being our cap that we established for the senior tax work off some time ago. Yeah. Makes sense? It makes sense to mm -hmm. me. So I would entertain a motion to increase the senior tax work off cap from 1500 to 1700 uh, effective November, December 1st, December 1st, which would still be in the tax year that the override mm -hmm. proposal would be a part of. So again, can I see a hand to your ear? Just for clarity, this would be uh, where the override is part of fiscal 25. Uh, the senior tax work off would begin with the December 1st, 2024 and run through November 30th of 2025. Effectively, those would wash each other out. I think it's a great uh, proposal. I hope the board votes yes for it. And uh, thanks to Dennis, because let me tell you something, seniors going in the market basket, they are getting clobbered at the prices there. They're getting yeah. clobbered with the prices of the gas station. I mean, they can talk, the Fed can talk all they want about prices and inflation going down. It, those two issues are not going down at all. They're soaring. And it's hurting seniors. So hats off to the board and Dennis for considering this. So we have a first on the table, a second. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Four yes. over. I, I just have a question. Last year in the board, when we increased the amount, we also talked about and voted to uh, increase the minimum wage. I mean, so right now, it's, it's tagged to the 13th. 
Yeah, now it's minimum wage. Minimum wage in Massachusetts is now fifteen dollars an hour. Yeah, we just raised it to seventeen dollars. So essentially, yeah, it does. She did seventeen dollars. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't clarify that. We just we said well, yeah. we, we we set it to seventeen hundred. We did right. use that was on hundred hours. Seventeen dollars. Yeah. yeah, it's seventeen hundred dollars on a hundred hours. A hundred hours. Yeah. The math is a lot easier to keep it at. 100 hours than it is to no, say I mean, $15 an hour. It's a hundred of our little calculators. I make them turn their phones off. But, to, it's, but my point, my point is yeah, that it's if still a hundred hours. Senior, that only works 50 mm -hmm. hours. They're going to get paid $17 an hour for those 50 hours. They get paid at that same rate. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we, we want. So yeah. I would just amend, clarify the motion that it is to still cap the program at a hundred hours, yeah. but it changes yeah. the rate to $17 an hour. Yeah. Right. That's, Oh, Thank you for the clarification. Yes, yeah, good point. Yes, is it's the a, vote still all in favor? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There we go. It's Thank a you. great help. At least that's what we can do. You know, it's uh, mm -hmm. I know we started discussing that you know earlier in the year, and then you know it's uh, it's, it's finally you know we put on the pieces. And the last time we voted on the senior tax work off, we um, voted to keep it in line with minimum wage. Yes. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you all. Thank you very much. much. Our other business tonight is the uh, town administrator's recommendation to appoint and ratify a director of planning and engineering. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm very happy to present Mr. Robert Lucier. Everyone knows him as Rob. And yep. Rob's been an associate member of the planning board for quite some time. Um, we got to get him on camera first. I don't know why. Michael, help you. Thank you. Rob's a familiar face. He's been a part of uh, several subcommittees in town, and he's got a great background. Rob um, works for an engineering firm presently, and uh, he does a lot of peer reviews for communities uh, in the area. So he, he really knows what um, the planning and the land use departments are up against. Um, when looking at development proposals, looking at plans, Rob's working towards his PE, um, which which is great. Has a certificate, his Title V certificate. You have his resume, it has all this information. So he'll kind of be our Swiss Army knife. He'll be able to help out down at the PPW. <laughs> he'll be able to help out uh, with the Board of Health, with, with Dylan. And um, I told Rob I, when I was recruiting him, I said, you're attending all of these meetings. Yeah, you'll be able to attend and you're actually getting paid. It's a job. So um, <laughs> well, Rob has a wealth of knowledge. He's, he's from Bellingham, born and raised here, lives in Bellingham. It was interesting when I was looking at his resume, he did his Eagle Scout project in 2012 at the North Community Building. I remember that project. I told him, I didn't remember Rob, sorry. We're but aging I, ourselves. I remember, the, I remember the project. So he, he's been a part of the community. I just think it's a great fit. And I love the idea of having people that have a vested interest in the community being here with us. So we're recommending uh, Rob Lucia to the position of um, town uh, planner slash engineer. Be able to requires Rob engineer. to step down from his current role. As associate member of the yes. planning board, yes. yes. Questions, if any? Uh, no, I, I met Rob the other day and we had a nice visit and we talked about everything he's been doing. And I think he's going to be a great asset to the planning department and uh, he'll work well with the board too because they're familiar with him. Dennis called me last week and told me to do my homework. Yeah. <laughs> so I did. Um, yeah. And um, I initially had a list of things I was going to do, but I actually stopped short because the gentleman that I greatly respect and have a lot of admiration for on the planning board described you as the smartest man that he knows. Oh boy. And. Okay. Uh, Wow. Okay. And then I call, I spoke to one other person um, who had nothing but rave reviews. So good luck. Welcome to Bellingham, and I, I wish you nothing but success. Thank you. Oops. I'm good. You know, it's, uh, I don't have to ask much. You know, it's, I know Rob uh, is definitely um, it's um, one of the greatest things I want to see. Um, <clears throat> it's uh, coming from the roots of Bellingham. You know, it's, uh, he got the degree, he got education, he got the knowledge, and obviously he's been getting involved over the years all around town. And um, I'm, I'm pleased to actually, you know, it's um, um, being a subcommittee with him. You know, it's, um, it, it's, I think it's going to be a great addition to our town in a different level. Yeah. And uh, thank you. And, thank you. My impression, uh, having been on the Overlay District and a few others, um, having witnessed you firsthand, uh, I think one of the 
best compliment you can give someone is that they don't speak to hear themselves speak, but that you've done a lot of listening and that when you speak, uh, you've got something to say. So, Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate so, the very kind words. Yeah. So with that, uh, that is my recommendation. Yeah. So we take a, a we take a vote of board. Chairman. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the appointment of Robert Lucier to be our director of planning and engineering. Second, first and second, just for clarity, Dennis, uh, when would this take effect and budget information? Yep. Um, Robert and I are going to work on a startup date. Obviously, he wants to give his employer a reasonable uh, notice. So it will become effective once we can mutually agree on a date, but I'm sure it'll be, you know. In the near term. In the near term, absolutely. Okay. And we have made arrangements within the budget. As you know, we had a uh, a position to transfer out of there, create the vacancy, and that's why we started looking. So, so it's within the budget. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Rob, welcome to being Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate it. Look forward to working with everyone. Thank you for sitting, sitting through our entire meeting. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> uh, Hillary, you're next up with the vote on. Yeah, I just need you to um, vote on the vote and it'll be posted on Friday. Being passed around, entertain the motion to vote on the February 24th and March 4th minutes, either separately or together. Uh, Mr. Chair, I make the motion to approve the February 24th and the 4th minutes. Second. First and second. Um, any other questions? No. Nope. Seeing none, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? One. Mm -hmm. Next up on the agenda is old business. I have one item. No. Um, I bring this up simply because I was out and I was cornered, cornered. I was asked about the cleanup activities. Uh, we got emails about Earth Day, which is April 20th, um, but it goes to um, are there any other dates or plans? We brought it up, but I wanted to just because like yeah, as far as watching, watching mm -hmm. relative to uh, kids in town, you know, we, we have the account. Uh, yeah. I want to say the person's name because you all know him, but uh, you just asked again yeah. that we could just more. Uh, we actually met with the, um, the uh, uh, management team at the DPW last uh, Thursday morning to talk about gearing that up as we bring uh, people on board. Uh, to actually get that going. So the goal is to get that going this spring. Um, won't be until we start bringing in the summer help, but yep. having a day a week where we commit them to a, you know, a, a, a section of town and just staying yep. on it. And I think, I think we'll be able to make some real good inroads. So oh, good. I'm glad. We're, we're ready to start we, that up. Can yeah. we get them like, just, uh, for, for safety purposes, like I know when I brought it up last year, that was a big thing, at least a dedicated truck. Yep. To yeah. them, so with the flash and lights and everything, It'll be supervision. Of course, we'll outfit them properly. I want to make sure we get the, the gloves that can't be mm -hmm. penetrated by. Well, obviously, if, there, if there's something like that, you know, it's probably going to be the same thing as like what we do with Earth Day. Yeah, you know, you, you mark it, you call, you know, police or, or, or yeah, and problem. we'll have pickers and things yeah. like that to pick these things up. Yeah. So, uh, like that is the goal. We're gonna hit that hard. Um, in the spring, I know it's that'll be good. In the spring, it's the worst because the snow's gone. The little snow we had, and it's just yeah. it's everywhere. <laughs> and, our, <laughs> and our sweepers will be out soon too, doing the right. road, but it's what's on the side of the road. Yep. Um, I spoke to Jesse uh, Rydell, our DPW director, earlier um, at the end of last week. Um, He's on too, Jesse. So he can Jesse chime in if you would. There was a question sure. he said about that the state was in regarding the four lights. And they were adjusting the cycle. So, Jesse, my question was whether uh, the state assessed them and hasn't changed them, or if changes were made. Because I was at the VFW uh, yesterday, and uh, you know, was just counting off how long it took once the Center Street traffic cleared, and uh, I counted off 30 seconds, and the cars cleared after about seven or eight. Um, so, it was a question as to whether the states adjusted the lights already. And if you're comfortable that the changes, if they were made, are appropriate. 
Yeah, and that's a great question. Um, so actually, that's something that we have our um, uh, it's one of the contractors in town. Uh, they're performing mitigation work in that area. Um, that is something that, that we, we did request. They take a look at. Uh, adjustments were made. However, we have not had our final walkthrough on that just yet. Uh, we will uh, revisit. I know previously they were cycling even when cars were not staging in the area. Uh, it does appear that that has been modified. However, the uh, sequencing on the time uh, it was was not uh, further evaluated. It, it seemed, at least at the time while I was there, it seemed like it was adequate. However, if there are concerns, we can certainly revisit that before that's finalized. Yep. Put that out there. I, I just thought it was odd that yep. um, it seemed like for the thoroughfare that's South Main Street, there should be less stops. But yeah. I also know that the people who are watching, the reason that was put in there was because of all of the construction that we don't even have people in the homes yet. Um, it's more for a lot of the future. Right. Uh, anything on the new business? Uh, on administrative report, you provide just one one item, and since we have Jesse on, uh, let him uh, present it. Jesse, the uh, yeah. I know the North Main Street bids came in, and they came in uh, with well within budget. Maybe you can just talk a little bit about that project when it's going to begin. Yeah, absolutely. So yes, we were able to uh, to recently open bids for the North Main Mill and Pay project. Uh, we anticipate construction from the limits of the previous construction site at uh, the town center all the way through Hartford Avenue. Uh, this this project will be, uh, again, a complete um, mill and pave, meaning we're going to take down approximately two inches of pavement and uh, and add two inches on top of that. So it's going to be quite the, the project uh, to continue on with the positive paving that we've had uh, all the way from Douglas Drive through the town center. So we're going to continue on uh, up north. Bids came in about half of what we were expecting, so it was fantastic to see very uh, competitive numbers come through, and uh, glad to see this this project moving forward. Yep. Jesse's going to be joining us virtually uh, probably in April to talk a little bit about the schedule as far as projects that we have coming on. I do have one question for Jesse. Uh, is there any chance, uh, I would have gotten just a, a couple phone calls in regards to Box Pond Road and the condition of of that is there any chance of possibly getting some somebody down there just to take a look at it yeah absolutely and that's a great question uh, we've actually received uh, a number of emails especially uh, within the last few weeks um, I, i've given a very standard response that this will be vetted by the committee uh, preliminary uh, discussions were to have north main um, you know paved this year with the bids coming in as favorable as they did uh, we're certainly going to be discussing next roadways to be paved. Um, but yeah, certainly uh, Box Pond has been a very, um, you know, uh, it's been a hot item of contention and it's certainly something that we'll discuss with the committee, but that, that would be a fantastic candidate. Actually, Sahan uh, was with me earlier today when yeah. we uh, talked about Box Pond. So uh, how yeah. timely that, that it came up. That's all I have. Thank you, Jesse. And um, also, uh, Mr. Hennessy, and it's... Um... Jesse, can I uh, mention that, you know, it's obviously, you know, you're going to put a list together, you know, it's um, the prioritize, you know, all the, um, all the roads are uh, going to be at uh, need attention immediately. Absolutely. So what we're planning to do, um, there, there's a number of roads in town that could use, uh, you know, some, some work. So what we're going to do is compile a list of the 100 worst roads in town and uh, prioritize, you know, based on volume of traffic that passes through and, and the severity of the road at that time, uh, we're, we're going to prioritize uh, those that would be the ca best candidates for, for repair for the season. Is it too much to ask that it's shared with the board, please? Yeah. Oh, ab absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Great question. There was, Thank you. There was a point, I think we're going back seven or eight years when the town dedicated $5 million as part of the exclusion. No, it no. was a, yeah, was a P for some taxation. Taxation, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, and then that took several years to burn through that money, too. So there's only so many projects. Yeah, no, I, 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 I totally it, understand. Yeah. I just. So, and also one more thing, my yeah. name, Mr. Chair. And uh, actually, we were discussing this morning, you know, it's, uh, Beth was there, too. And um, so one of the things, actually, Jesse's going to be looking at it with DPW going forward. And uh, they're going to find a... Um, proper ways, maybe looking at different avenues. And then when we <clears throat> we um when we when we redo those roads, when we repave them, so they're gonna maybe use a different methods 
and then uh, properly drain it, so forth, so on, and then we won't have these problems moving forward. Okay. Got a little different, uh, different angles what yeah, on the assessment. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Oh, I believe he's having satisfied our agenda and saying motion to adjourn. So much. Second, you guys, I'm gonna flip a coin. Yeah, yeah. he's got more. He's got more. Just give it to Satan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Thank you, everyone, for attending either in person by Zoom or a cable.